Welcome to my pelvic floor mat. This mat, this class is a continuation on the pelvic floor tutorial. I urge you, if you haven't watched the pelvic floor tutorial or the breathing tutorial, I'd like to invite you to have a look at them so this mat makes more sense to you. Now, before we start this class, I urge you to empty the bladder because we're going to work on the pelvic floor muscles and when you have a full bladder it's going to be very uncomfortable so there are a few things that i like you to, to prepare for yourself at home i have here a, a roller that is if you have it if you do not have it that's okay okay or I have a bouncy ball. This is my daughter frozen ball. Um, you can also use um, like a volleyball or a, a basketball or any other bouncing ball or over ball, a Pilates over ball, okay? Um, that works too. We're gonna go through them, um, what kind of, uh, sort of what kind of density the ball should be. Um, then moving on, I have a lot of pillows here okay it depends on how you prefer your pillows to be so let's um, get going now the first part of this um, class is going to be releasing how to release your pelvic floor and how where is your pelvic floor I'm going to give you a few options at how you can do it okay so if you have a roller Go ahead and take them. Now, you can sit on the roller like so. Okay, we're gonna start sitting like that. If you don't have a roller, that's okay. You can use a ball and you can sit the same way. Now, if, um, a more dense a ball, a harder surface ball, will, um, will give you quite a pressure in the pelvic floor and maybe that's uncomfortable for you you can find a softer ball if you don't have a ball that's all right you can also use pillows like so okay you can stack the pillows however high you like and you can go ahead and sit on it okay so it doesn't give you as much feedback as the roller or a ball but you know it does have uh, enough feedback Okay, I'm going to use a roller today because I have it with me. And if you have a roller, I fully strongly suggest to use it. Okay, so I want to straddle yourself on the roller. Okay, like so. I want to sit your, I want you to sit your pelvis on it. Going back to the pelvic floor tutorial, how the pelvic floor muscle um, attaches to the pubic bone, the front of the pelvis, the coccyx at the back of the pelvis, and to the sits bone. Okay, here, sitting on the roller or ball or the pillow, I want you to sort of just rock forward and backward. Here, perhaps close your eyes when you do so. Just rocking forward and backward. Perhaps it feels uncomfortable for you. Okay. Now I'd like to invite you to be sensitive to the sensation of the pelvic floor of the pelvis with the roller, the ball, or the pillow. Okay. Now, if what the surface of what you're sitting is quite dense you may find this a little bit uncomfortable you know because we are sort of massaging or releasing the scar tissue if you have any um, in that pelvic floor muscles if, it, if it's too painful you can just release out a little bit more take the weight out of the the roller or the ball okay and then just do it gently okay now just close your eyes here for a moment now when you rock forward, you'll find or you'll meet the pubic bone. When you rock back, you'll find the sits bone, sorry, the tailbone, the coccyx. And then I want you to also just kind of tip to the right. So put more weight on the right leg and then put more weight on the left leg. And then you'll find those sitting bones. 
Now, if you have an imbalance of the pelvic floor, you'll find that one part or one side of the pelvic floor will be um, a lot more uncomfortable than the other. Take it easy. Lift out of the weight, you know. And then you can go ahead and tip forward and back again, or you can make a little circle, circular movement around tracing the pubic sits bone tailbone. I'm closing my eyes here as I'm talking to you because I want myself to feel the sensation of my pelvic floor against or on the roller. And I'm gonna take myself over to the other side. You know, go ahead and pause the video if you need to, if you need more time, if you want me to just not listen to my, my voices and just wanna have a little quiet time for yourself, okay? Just roll it around, explore, forward and back, left and right. Remember, the pelvic basin is filled with connective tissue and muscle. For those of you female um, women who have had childbirth through any method, you know, perhaps you may have some scar tissue around the pelvic floor muscles, okay? And this will help you to sort of work on that scar tissue, releasing that tension in that tissue and bring that elasticity of the pelvic floor back into its original state, okay? Now, let's change the position. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to take your feet forward and sit like so. Right here as well, I want you to rock back. You can find more the tailbone, the coccyx here, and then forward. Again, we're massaging the posterior passage of the pelvic floor. Perhaps if you find that you've been standing in a slouch pelvic position, that the posterior part of your pelvic floor is a little tight. Again, close your eyes, allow yourself, invite the sensation of that pelvic floor in the body. Maybe you're pulling your face in a different way because it's very uncomfortable. That's all right. It's a good sensation though. Observe it as you do this. And then moving on into left and right, we kind of swing like rocking in a boat, you know. And you find that left and the right sitting bone. You know, what I'm feeling at the moment here as I'm pulling my right bottom out is that my right sitting bone, it's so, the space between the, my pelvic floor, the middle of the, my pelvic floor, my right sitting bone is pretty tight. So, you know, I have an imbalanced pelvic floor in a way, right? But I'm working on this to release that tightness on my right pelvic floor. Maybe you find I'm talking gibberish right now, thinking how the hell, sorry, excuse my word. How did you find that tightness? You know, through practice, you do it over and over again. You, I'm allowing myself to be open about any feeling, any pain, any relief, you know? any emotion that comes out of this, um, uh, what I call a release technique. And then I invite you to do a little circular motion again, you know, trace that tail, right, sitting bone, front, pubic bone, and then left, and then just go around it. And over to the other side. Okay, there is no right or wrong. Everyone's pelvic floor is different. And nobody has the exact same pelvic floor. Okay, we're all different. We have different personality. So, we have different body types. We have different life. Just go with it. Okay? All right. And if you'd like to do more, you can pause the video and go ahead and explore more on this. I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. Now, so... We somehow release that pelvic floor. I don't know how you feel, but I feel I mean, it's a little bit tender. I do have a tight pelvic floor. I tend to have a tight pelvic floor here, but it is a nice, relaxed sensation that I'm feeling now. Okay, now I'm going to 
turn my roller out this way. Again, you don't have to have a roller. You can use a basketball, a volleyball, or any bouncy ball, okay? Now we're gonna massage or release the sit bone, the ischial tuberosity, okay? So that's a bony landmark on the bum cheek, underneath the bum cheek. Okay, I'm gonna sit on my right bottom cheek, or my right sit bone. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put my right hand down, I'm gonna take my left foot off, so I'm lifting my left bum cheek up, and then, ooh, sitting bone, ow, ow. Right, see, tight right pelvic floor, that's what I have. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trail, so make a cert, I'm gonna massage around the sit bone. So imagine my sit bone is like a little uh, a ball, all right? So I'm gonna go around that ball-like sit bone, releasing any tension I have around that uh, sitting bone. Because the pelvic floor is also attaches to that bone. And then go in the other direction. Yeah, tender, definitely. Okay, now, changing over to the other side. Again, you can pause the video if you need more time. And then I'm lifting my right bum cheek and onto my left sitting bone, which is pretty released, you know. You may find the same thing that I find, that one part of the pelvic floor, the right or the left or the front or back, it's a lot more ouchy than the other side. That shows that you have an imbalance of uh, pelvic um, placement. Yeah. Okay. So, right, just kind of going over to the other direction as well. Okay. That's pretty good on my left side here. Okay, so that's on to the release technique of the pelvic floor. All right, now let's work on strengthening or connecting into that pelvic floor. So what I like to do is sometimes I actually like it to do this on a fitness ball. But I don't have a fitness ball, and many of you may not have a fitness ball, so what I came out with is towers of cushion. You can put as many cushions as you like to sit on it, okay? I actually like mine um, with three cushions. I'm not that tall, I'm only five foot two on a good day. I shrink down to five foot one at night, so I'm not that tall at all. So what I do, I stack up my cushion and I sit like so. You can choose any position you like. You can even do this, sitting on a chair, sitting on the fitness ball, uh, standing up, kneeling down. Uh, you can sit like what I'm doing or you can also have your feet forward like so on in a diamond position. Okay, so anything. What I like sometimes when I sit on this, that I have a good sensation of feedback on my pelvic floor. So the floor of my pelvic floor is connected to something else. And because of, remember, that dome-like position, the dome-like shape, is also created by this cushion. Okay, so I kind of know or feel uh, sorry, it gives me a good feedback on how I connect to my pelvic floor. Okay, let's move on guys. So you can sit in any position you like, here, here, tuck in this way, all right, or again on a chair, standing, kneeling, c'est la vie. All right, I'm gonna get myself into a diamond leg, diamond shape position. Okay, now let's tap onto that pelvic floor, okay? Remember in my tutorial, I talk about the passages. The front passage being the urethra, the middle passage being the vagina, and the back passage being the anus. This is con considering you are female, okay? If you're a male, you only have the front and the back passage. You also have the middle passage, but you don't have the opening. So you can also imagine you have that middle passage opening, okay? Right, so remember, empty your bladder. If you haven't done so, pause the video, go to the toilet, empty your bladder, you need it. Right, if you've done all of that, let's settle your body in the space. I like you to, I like to invite you to close your eyes. 
Now, just take an inhalation, breathe in, and break out. Allow that pelvis to settle on the chair, on the ground, on the pillow, standing up, whatever medium you used and choose today. And in deep inhalation again. And exhale. And I like you to just control the breath as we do this. Inhale. And I like you to invite, I like to invite you to bring your focus on that pelvic bowl, on that pelvic floor that we just released. Perhaps it's still throbbing from being released before. And let that be. Now, I want you to tap onto your front passage, your urethra, and just try to rock, locate it, okay? Maybe you need to rock a little bit forward to find it a little bit more, perhaps. You're welcome to do so. Now, as you inhale, I want you to think about drawing that front passage up. And then exhale, and then let it go down. Now, the imagery you can use here is kind of like, perhaps, uh, if you have a straw, and every single passages has a straw attached to the passages, okay? Now, as you inhale, I want you to think that, that, straw, you're just slurping like a laminate, drawing up the straw as you lift that passage up. And you hold that drawing sensation through the straw, hold it for about two seconds, and then release it. Okay, we're gonna go through each passages here, okay? Now, and the next passage we're gonna go through is the middle passage. Now, I want you to inhale as you draw that passage up through that straw, and then we're just gonna hold it. One, two, and then exhale, and then release down. And then let's move on to the back passage, and we're gonna inhale, try to look at the back passage. I want it to draw that back passage up, and then we hold it. Inhale, one, two, and then exhale, draw that passage down. Another thing that you need to take note here, guys, everybody, is that you do not have to contract that pelvic floor 100%, uh-uh. You just need to connect into about 20, 40% of that pelvic floor, and that's okay. That's enough to be functional, okay? 20, 40% of that pelvic floor. Okay, let's move on to the front passage again. Just you inhale, draw that front passage, urethra up. And exhale, we draw it down. And in the middle passage, draw it up again. Like slurping a laminate through a straw. And exhale, draw it down. Moving on to the back passage. And inhaling up through that straw. And exhale, and let's go on to the front again. Front passage, hold it, and exhale. Middle passage as you inhale, and hold it, and exhale. And then back passage, and inhale, and then exhale. And you can choose to keep going with this exercises. You can pause the video or just ignore my voice and keep working on it, okay? And now we're gonna move on to the next exercise. We're going to connect the three passages into one passage. Now the next exercise is an elevator exercise. You can open your eyes for a second here, guys, at home. Okay. Now the elevator exercise, so you have the three passages, and the three passages will unite into one passage, okay? And then we're gonna divide 
the section from the pelvic floor, the base of the pelvic floor to the belly button. Okay, so this is my base of my pelvic floor, and that's my belly button. Now, I often teach this to my pre and postnatal ladies. Okay, I talk a lot about the pelvic floor. Now, with this ground floor, uh, the, the, the base of the pelvic floor and the belly button, we're going to divide this space into five levels, so five floor. So first, second, third, fifth floor. Fifth floor being the belly button. I like to invite you now to close your eyes. Inhale and then exhale. Let body, let your body settle onto the medium that you're sitting on. Okay. Now I want you to unite all those passages, become one elevator. Okay. Now here I want you, as you inhale, I want you to take the elevator up onto the first floor. And then exhale, draw it down, back to the ground floor. And then inhale, take it up again onto the second floor. And then exhale, and draw it down again onto the ground floor. And then inhale, take it up again onto the third floor. And exhale, down again onto the ground floor. And an inhale up onto the fourth floor. And an exhale and then down again to the ground floor. Now, remember, you don't want to bury it down. You don't want to push it down. Just descend the elevator down. And the last one, inhale, drawing up into the fifth floor. And then let's take it down onto the air. Ground floor as you exhale. All right, this time I want you to exhale to lift that pelvic floor up. So exhale, draw the pelvic floor up onto the first floor. And then inhale, bring it down to the first floor, or to the ground floor, sorry. And then exhale, bring it up again to the second floor. Inhale, down to the ground floor. And then exhale, bring it up again to the third floor. Inhale, release it down to the ground floor. And fourth floor, as you exhale, inhale down onto the ground floor. And then exhale to the fifth floor. And then inhale down to the ground floor. All right, let's open your eyes for a second. You should be able to connect to your pelvic floor on an inhale or an exhale. Any breathing, the pelvic floor should be able to be strengthened. So this is more in an up, this is more in a, in, in not in a subconscious level, okay? In a more subconscious level is the pelvic floor sort of moved together with the diaphragm, like so, inhale and exhale. We're just training that pelvic floor into, um, into, sorry, I'm losing my words here. I'm just training that pelvic floor so they can be a lot stronger and we can control them to what we want them to do, okay? All right, now let's close our eyes again. Now it's a little bit different here, guys. So I want you to exhale, draw that pelvic floor up to the third floor. Hold it up in the third floor as you inhale. Hold it up as you exhale. Hold it up as you inhale. And exhale, bring it down to the ground floor. And then inhale, take it up to the fifth floor. And hold it up onto the exhale. Hold it up as you inhale. It's a lot harder here. And hold it on the exhale. Inhale, bring it down to the ground floor. And then exhale to the first floor. Inhale, up to the third floor. Exhale, up to the fifth floor. Inhale down to the ground floor. Tricky, huh? Let's do it again. Exhale up to the third floor. Inhale up to the fourth floor. Exhale down to the th third floor. Inhale up to the fifth floor. And then exhale down to the ground floor. And then inhale, stay on the ground floor. Exhale, let's take it up to the first floor. Inhale up to the third floor. 
exhale up to the fifth floor. Hold it on an inhale on the fifth floor and exhale down to the ground floor. And let's release that. So you can play around with the pelvic floor on an inhale and an exhale in any level you like. Take that, practice that every day and see if you can feel that pelvic floor more and more. If you don't feel it today, that's okay guys. Practice makes perfect. Okay, don't worry if you do a mistake. Just keep working on it, keep trying to find it. One day it will happen. Another thing I will say is if you do have pelvic floor issue, seek some professional help, perhaps some pelvic floor specialist that can help you and guide you to train or find the, the, the cause or the issue of the pelvic floor. Okay, so let's move on and put that pelvic floor into practice. So release the cushions. Oops. All right, I want you to lie on your back. It's lying supine, feet are hip width apart, shoulders are open, arms are long. Okay, now, now your pelvic floor is quite warm now. Okay, good. All right, so inhale. Lateral breathing, exhale. As the diaphragm comes up, I want you to draw that pelvic floor elevator up towards the belly button. And an inhale, lateral breathing. Remember diaphragm contracts down. The pelvic floor also contracts up, but do not push that pelvic floor down. Just subconsciously just release it. Now exhale, draw that pelvic floor up like an elevator and then tap into more, sorry, tap higher into the abdominal here, okay? And again, inhale, lateral breathing, and then exhale, draw that pelvic floor up, wrap the abdominal in. Let's go into some pelvic curls, so inhale, and then exhale, pelvic floor, and then you're gonna draw the lower back down, scooping the abdominal here. This is where the pelvic floor is important to hold the content and support, the, uh, support the content of the abdominal, right? And then take it up into your bridge here. Okay, now, hold that position at the top. You'll find that pelvic is higher than your ribs, than your heart. So, I want you to stay out here, and I want you to inhale. Allow the pelvic floor to descend down towards, this, towards the base of the pelvic. And then exhale, draw it up as you connect into your abdominal. And then inhale, and then exhale. Now I want you to do this without squeezing your bottom, okay? And then inhale, pure pelvic floor work. Exhale, you feel that pelvic floor draws up into a sort of rib cage, which is descending down towards the shoulder. Okay, and an inhale, and an exhale. It's a good way to find that pelvic floor connection. And an exhale. Let's do one more time. Inhale, and an exhale as you roll the spine down. Okay, and then let's do that again. In breath, exhale, pelvic elevator drawing up towards the belly button and then the pelvis rock, imprint the lower back and then you articulate the pelvis up onto your bridge. Okay, inhale, stay up the top and exhale. Again, lift that pelvic floor elevator towards the heart, and an inhale, and exhale. The, the, the gravity is helping you here, so you find that it's a little bit easier perhaps than what we did before. And an exhale, drawing the elevator up towards the belly button, and then one more time, inhale, and an exhale as you roll the spine down and then release. Have your feet slightly wider, maybe at the edge of the, the side of the mat. I want you to just turn the leg to the side here, tip it to the side and then bring it up. Just to stretch that pelvic floor and then bring it up. 
and an exhale and up remember you want your pelvic floor to be strong but a strong pelvic floor is also a supple and elastic pelvic floor and tip to one side and an over and a last one and center all right coming up the next position that we're going to work on is your all four okay so this position is going to imitate squatting position so shoulder over your hands now what i want you to do is bring your feet together okay fit together heel i'm oh, sorry fit in small v a diamond shape okay right here Your knees slightly wider than the hip joint okay so it's going to look a little bit like that part of my dirty feet okay here now i just want you to rock back as you inhale and then as you exhale draw that pelvic floor up and bring your pelvis in the same plane as your knee and again inhale imagine you're squatting exhale and an inhale pelvic elevator drawing up again inhale and exhale one more inhale stretching out the pelvic floor exhale drawing back let's change your breathing here we're going to exhale inhale bounce it up exhale stretch pelvic floor inhale bounce it up and then exhale and then bounce it up one more exhale and exhale bounce it up now half your feet wider and half any wider so wider stance here okay so same thing again inhale we're going to push the pelvis back exhale bring it back here and then inhale we're stretching it we're holding it together and exhale we bring it back up and an inhale exhale and always think about the elevator drawing up before you move and inhale and elevator one more and now we're going to change that breathing exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale and inhale one more we need to be um, easy to adapt on an inhale and exhale here there's no right or wrong you need to be able to connect to your pelvic floor on both breath okay come back in and now bring your knees hip width apart okay now here so you are in a nice alignment here take an inhale and then i want you to exhale draw the elevator up towards your belly button hugging that center in and we're just going to hold that in for three two one and release and again two more times exhale draw that pelvic elevator up as you exhale hold an inhale three two one exhale release one more time and exhale drawing the pelvic floor elevator up hold and inhale three two one and release now as you do that let's float the knee so when you exhale you can draw that pelvic floor like you just did i want it to slightly hover okay that knees up and we're just going to breathe here inhale exhale holding that pelvic floor up as you keep inhaling and exhaling stay there three and two and one well done and then release release the feet sit the pelvis back you can open the knee slightly wider and then just sit back into your rest position okay just stretching that pelvic floor allowing the sitting bone to widen out to the side here okay inhale and exhale pick up the pelvic floor up and then come up again okay lastly i want to invite you to stand here guys 
A great way to strengthen your pelvic floor in all honesty, squats. Okay, so we did a modified squat, squat, a squat position before by being on our knees um, and hands. If you need allow you to do so, I like to invite you to stand. Okay, so have your feet slightly wider than your hips here. Okay, now a good alignment is required here. Okay, now I need to inhale, descend it down. So as you inhale, the, um, the diaphragm contracts down. Okay, I want you to hold that pelvic floor here. Don't let it drop down and bury down to the ground, okay? So we're gonna inhale, I want you to just descend your pelvis down, however height you can get, okay? Now, as you exhale, pelvic elevator, draw it up and bring yourself up, okay? And an inhale, okay, you can take your hands here, I'm just gonna emulate the diaphragm. Inhale, I'll descend down, but do not let the pelvic floor Drops down, hold it, and exhale, pick it up, bring it up as the diaphragm relaxes up. And an inhale, down, hold the bottom of the pelvic floor here, guys. Exhale, draw the elevator as you come up, okay? And an inhale again, let's do one more time here. And an exhale, hold. Draw the elevator as you come up, okay? Now, let's go down again, inhale. And let's just stay here, okay? Exhale, draw the elevator up. Inhale, one more time. Exhale, draw the elevator up. Inhale, exhale, draw it up and take yourself up. Yep, you're gonna feel the burn on your thighs. Let's do one last one. And let's go down as you inhale. Now make sure you don't slouch that body down, guys. Do me a favor, lift that spine up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. And take it up. Good job. Okay, and let it go, shake it out. Okay, well, I hope that helps you to understand and locate the where is where are your pelvic floor. If you find the sensation is still rather vague today, it's okay, it's a good start. Keep practicing, keep revisiting this video. Think about the tutorial of the pelvic floor. It makes more sense and more and more and more as you practice. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you in my other videos and my other classes. And have a great day and see you later.